The road to Omaha goes through Louisville, Kentucky for four teams with national title dreams. Illinois State and Indiana ready to go here on day one of the NCAA tournament. Guys up. And he has had basically the same batting order the last 40 games or so. John Rave leading it off, a terrific leadoff man, a very good center fielder. And you've got Joe Isles, the conference player of the year in the Missouri Valley in the cleanup spot. Uh, Milto's stuff is not overwhelming, but his competitiveness uh, is, according to head coach Mercer. Yeah, you're talking about a young man didn't even pitch in high school, but when he can do that, he can pitch him deep into the ball game. This one sprayed the left field. It's going to get down for a hit in front of Dunham. So John Rave. Check the swing on the 1-2, and it's a called strike three. Billy Van Raphorst, the home plate umpire, brings up Lidman. The 1-0. Back up the middle. And it was played well there by Ashley. He'll flip to second for one. Pulled off the bag is Bradley at first on the throw from Walker. So yeah, we got a great matchup here today. We got two teams that won multi-bid leagues and we got conference pitcher of the year on the mound. We got both coaches were conference coaches of the year. It's a really good 2-3 matchup. And that's what you're going to see from him. He'll throw that fastball to both sides of the plate. The pitch is the changeup. Coming off a monster year, he's won his last eight starts. And he's only walked 27 hitters. And he got his first strikeout already. The set and the pitch from Hendrick lifted into the air. Right center field going, and the wind carries it out of here. Elijah Dunham puts Indiana on the board with a two-out homer here in the first. So typical of these Hoosiers this yeah. year, Chris. A couple of strikeouts and a two-run homer here already this inning. And I tell you what, they got themselves a nice little showing in the crowd. Elijah Dunham giving the fans what they want, a hanging breaking ball. Ground ball, and that is going to get through into right field. On his way to third is Zoris. He's going to get there. And Indiana nearly had Butler as he rounded first base. But now how his victory over the Wolverines, which helped propel them to the Big Ten title, he won his start. Back up the middle, this one is through, base hit, and the first one is in for Illinois State. The Milto comes set, the 1-0, popped up. Foul ground, and Feynman has his mask in his hand, and he hangs with it and makes a terrific catch. How about that veteran play for the Indiana backstop? Well, I'm not real sure why. Soft liner in the right center. It's going to get down for a hit. On his way home is Butler. They're going to throw it to third. In there sliding is Huggins. And standing at second is Perola with another run batted in for Illinois State. We're tied at two. Oh, how about that? Wow, and an inning that started with a leadoff double and a base running mistake. Corolla makes some pay, kind of punching that ball into right center field. Pauly Milto getting a little more run than sink on that two-seam fastball. And fortunately, if you're an Illinois State fan, that one was hit into the perfect part of the ballpark. That Bermuda track. Already six hits in this game for the Redbirds. Swung out and missed, and Milto gets a big strikeout to get out of a long second inning for the Hoosiers. Illinois State has tied it up at two. It's really a, a unique story. Oh, yeah! uh, a, a hitter who, as he hits a rocket in the right field, and they keep the hit parade. The players, when you and I were talking to him, Chris, yesterday, that they're oh, yeah! really enjoying the moment. They're certainly enjoying hitting <laughs> off of Milton. They continue to tattoo pitches. Ground ball to the shortstop. That's going to get a run home for Illinois State. A productive ground out for Nick Zoris. And Illinois State has its first lead of the day. Soft liner into right, and it's over the glove of Ashley. Trying to score from second is Joe Butler, and Jack Butler makes it 4-2. to two. 
and credit Joe Butler for, for changing his mind to play before and not running into an out at third base because he's at second. Jack Butler does a really nice job here of just kind of staying on this ball and dumping it into right field. A change up running away from him. He's able to dump it into right. Joe Butler comes around to score, and this has been an offensive clinic to this point by the Redbirds. Ashley Matt Gorski, 9-1-2. and two. Checked his swing, did he go? Played San Diego, that was a big time pre-conference schedule. Striking out here is Gorski, the pitcher from Navy. Ball strike three, the second time that said to make him a catcher. So he goes through the growing pains of, of learning a new position. Throw down, did they get him? Did they keep the tag on? Yes, they did. Ryan Feynman throws out Parola for out number one here in the fourth. The one, two, got him. So Paul Milto with a confidence building fourth inning. Strikeouts for Hedrick. Yes, and he's got eight. Dunham goes with the way they feel about the zone. Struck him out. Ten strikeouts for Hedrick. Jeff Mercer's Hoosiers have to figure him out. They're down two runs. We'll talk to Jeff next. So far today, it's been tough. This is hit to the warning track, still carrying. Richardson reaches up and makes the catch as Zoris is out, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. 1-2 to Feynman, the catcher, and he strikes out. Deer, who's just kind of a lifer college guy, but then they got the, the big league feel as well. Richardson fans, and that is strikeout number 12, matching a career high. Recorded by strikeout. I'll make it nine. He strikes out the side in the fifth. One, two, three inning for the Missouri Valley Conference Pitcher of the Year. Four, two Redbirds. Jack Butler, eight, nine, and one. Butler puts it in play, and that's another base hit for Illinois State. And you know, you're not uncomfortable playing with such high stakes. Line drive, base hit. Past Ashley into right field. They're going to hold up Butler at third. And Illinois State again has runners at the corners. Has been a nice surprise here of late. To center, tough play. Diving, oh. Gorski can't make the catch. Coming in is Butler. And it's 5-2. to two, And now Indiana's concerned about their starting center fielder, Matt Gorski, who is slow to get up. The training. All right, here's the freshman Gabe Bierman out of Jeffersonville, Indiana, 6'2", 170 pounds, and he's going to need to find a way to retire Illinois State hitters, something that Paulie Milto certainly struggled with today. First pitch put in play from the Illinois State DH, and it's another base hit. Coming in to score is Rave, 6-2. Well, they went one and two here in 22. Put in play, ground ball, and Barr throws up Butler, but another run comes in to make it seven to two. Again, the three-two pitch, in on the hands. It'll be a tough play. Butler charging, and he's going to eat it. Bases loaded. The Hoosiers will continue the inning. The 1-1. One, one. We ground ball back to Hedrick. He'll go to first, and Illinois State gets out of the inning. With their first hit since the first inning, Indiana strands three, and it's still a five-run lead for the Redbirds. Play man for Chris Berg back here, and there you see the uh, iced elbow. Uh, pitcher of the year from the Missouri Valley Conference, Brent Hedrick. 14 strikeouts today. He has done after six solid innings. Six spectacular innings, really, when you think about how many swings and misses he garnered. But he's normal college baseball environments, and so there's there's just a few variables at play there. Line drive back up the middle, base hit. Indiana with their fourth hit of the day only, but 
comes at a critical time here for the Hoosiers. As they now have two on and one out. Runners go. And walked and base is loaded. Base is loaded with Hoosier. Ends up playing for Illinois State. The 3-1 pitch outside, and it's 7-3. An RBI walk for Lloyd, and here comes Dunham, who's had a terrific day at the plate. Huge hole at shortstop if he wants to poke one through the backside. Line drive, back up the middle, base hit. Ashley comes in. And it's seven to four. And the bases remain loaded for Cole Barr. Third run batted in today for Dunham. And that's, that's how you do it right there. Keep your nose down, keep your chest down. Make sure you got plate coverage over that outside corner. You knew where the ball was going. And not exactly smoked, but hit right back up the middle. And the Hoosiers tack on another one. Maybe take the lead with a big swing. Inside, walked him, and it's seven to five. Second run walked in this inning. And the ninth man to hit, walk into the plate in Jeremy Houston. Ground ball, left side, going to be a tough play. Snagged by Huggins, comes up for it. Not in time. And it's seven to six. Infield RBI single for Houston. And Indiana continues to claw back. They have scored four runs. And that's a hit back. We're tied at seven. Harvey hits Feynman. And another run comes in. A five-run lead has evaporated for Illinois State. Let's see if he makes a move at this ball. I don't know. What do you got here, Clay? I don't think so. Uh, I think he held, like his, he held ground. his ground pretty yeah. good to me. Grant Richardson at the plate, puts it in play. Bouncing ball to the first baseman, Jack Butler. will flip to the pitcher covering. And Illinois State is finally out of the inning. But Indiana gets five. And we're tied at seven, going to the eighth. A lot of walks. Line drive, and Illinois State gets back on the horse. With another base hit, it's Derek Parola with his fifth hit. Manis is the third pitcher after Gabe Bierman bridged the gap. Hit well left field, has a chance. Joe Isles puts it off the wall. And Illinois State goes back in front. It's an RBI double for the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. His 45th run batted in. What a response by the Redbirds after a really tough bottom of the seventh. They come back, their senior gets a his fifth hit of the game, and now their conference player of the year, Joe Isles with a rocket off the left field wall, and you've got to have your best players come up big in big games if you're going to win them. And I can just tell the fondness in your voice when you said the name. Pop up, left side. This is a tough play for the shortstop. And the left fielder, Peterson, is going to get there to make the play. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball, called strike three. Lloyd is upset. Dalton Harvey gets a huge third out in the eighth. Mm, struck him out. And Feynman's going to have to make another throw. He does. Butler is stranded at second. Last chance for Indiana here in Louisville. Hit well, pass hit. Good for Cole Barr. After runner goes. And he went around. That's a strike. And Zoris couldn't find it. So Barr is safe at second with an aggressive stolen base here in the right second. The 0-2 pitch. Struck him out. 
the 1 1 to Houston. Called strike, the runner went, and he's safe at third. Bar in sliding. And so now the tying run just 90 feet away. Got it! Ball game. And the Redbirds are in the winner's bracket. 8-7 the final. Dalton Harvey finishes it off out of the pen, and he's the winning pitcher. You can't say enough about Dalton Harvey. What a performance when it looked like the Illinois State bullpen was not going to be able to answer the bell. Dalton Harvey took the baseball and gave them all they could hope for. You see those, those boys are fired up. The Redbirds in the 1-0 game tomorrow afternoon. And they'll take on the number seven national seed, the number one seed in this regional, the Louisville Cardinals, or UIC, the University of Illinois at Chicago.